Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Of course, as you can see in the big box, is Bill Jordan, the Mr. Baby Boomer Embrace the Boom Guy. Bill, good to see you again. Well, good to be seen in the big box or anywhere else. Yeah, thanks for having me. Back. You're a big box guy. Yeah. Um, this is a terrible segue to the question I'm about to ask you, but um, most of us who know and love you uh, know that you are seem to be smitten with Salma Hayek, although I think from time to time you're swearing off posting pictures of her. But we know that you adore her and you find her just absolutely beautiful and somebody that you like to celebrate. But I suspect that uh, you're like a, a, a learning, a, acquiring taste in fine wine, that when you were a youth, you had, uh, the first of all, she probably wasn't born yet. Uh, is Salma Hayek the first person that you idolized as a female uh, personality, or did you did you grow into this uh, uh, from a as a youth from, with, other, serious, with other examples? Is, John, is he being is he being serious, John, with this question? Is I, I don't like, know. I, I, he, he obviously is not thinking about the male id. You know, when do we discover girls at? Uh, at seven and eight, we don't know why. And then at 13, we find out why we're interested in girls. And then at 18, and then at 25, and then, oh, my God, it never stops. Well, so, I yes. Will I will tell you this. As, as a baby boomer, as I have embraced the boom, so I was right. born in 1954. So, you know, I'm going to say, gosh, so early, the early 1960s, on TV, Ellie Mae Clampett. Oh, yeah. Laura Petrie. Eh. Samantha Stevens. Elizabeth oh, yeah. Petrie on Bewitched. Uh, F Troop, Wrangler Jane. I love Wrangler Jane. <laughs> uh, uh, I dream of Jeannie. The How about Junction. Every week it was a dilemma for me. Bobby Joe, Betty Joe, or Billy Joe? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> if I if I had to pick one, <laughs> if I had to pick one, but of course I think the the ultimate, the you know, her or her debate was Ginger or Marianne from Gilligan's Island. Oh, of course, right. Yeah. That was the ultimate, and so I ended up marrying the very first Marianne I ever met. So I, I, that was probably some sort of psychological, like subconscious thing that here was a Marianne. She spells it differently than Marianne did on on uh, Gilligan's Island. And then I was fortunate enough uh, in radio, in the, in the radio business to interview Don Wells a few times, an absolute sweetheart. But, um, and I always was a Marianne kind of guy. Every now and then it would be like, well, maybe Ginger for like a weekend getaway. But Marianne <laughs> was the long-term, you know, Marianne was the long-term settled down with uh, person. But with, in my youth, I think, Quite honestly, guys, and I don't think I'm really that abnormal. It was like any female on any TV show or in any movie. Yeah, I had, as, as, long as, they, as long as they were breathing. The James, well, the James Bond girls, oh. the Bond girls. Mm -hmm. The Bond girls. Now, I was going to say, it's the movies for me, not the TV. Although Ginger and Marianne was a real uh, a real choice. They, they was the yin and yang of, uh, of female sexuality. Yeah. What like about Lovey Howell? What about Lovey Howell? Well, now I was going to get back to Lovey Howell. Here's the thing about Lovey Howell. You don't think about her when you're a kid. But I just Googled her, and she was 64 years old when the, when the show Gilligan's Island began. She was then younger than I am now, and I now appreciate Lovey because, A, I now think she's kind of hot, and, two, she was rich. <laughs> <laughs> so so she would pick now. If I were to just start sh watching that show now, I would be I would be focused on Lovey Howe. Well, you know, so, yeah. since you're in such deep trouble when Marianne watches this episode, unless you don't, uh, unless you will tell her, don't watch 
uh, the episode this week on uh, you'll you'll keep away from it. That no, may be the same. But you never tell I, them not to watch. Don't ever say don't watch. <laughs> oh yeah, that's. But but it, it seems to me that um, uh, one of the big uh, loves of your life, I'll call it what it is, would have been Farrah Fawcett. Was she ever? Uh, uh, you looked like the kind of guy that would just absolutely adore her. Well, you know, that's another one of those, you know, they had uh, the Charlie's Angels. Initially, it was, uh, what, Kate Jackson. Right. Mm. And Farrah Fawcett and Jacqueline Smith. Yeah. And it was like, again, every week I would rotate. Which one, you know, if I had to choose, like, they would go along with that. Oh, well, Bill's chosen me this week. Um I, I think I did initially uh, gravitate to Farrah and uh, that famous uh, poster of hers in the mid seventies in the red one piece swimsuit. And she's got that zillion dollar smile. Uh, I did not personally own that, but we did have it hanging in the radio station on air studio at the time. The only poster of a woman that I ever got celebrity that was, I actually owned was Linda Carter. And it was not the Wonder Woman one. It was a denim. She was like in a denim shirt and jeans and just looking all Linda Carterish. And I had that poster. <laughs> Linda Carterish. I love it. Well, we all know every man who's ever seen Linda Carter knows what you're talking about. Mm. You don't need to go. <laughs> That's great. But pin -up, listen, pinups are a male phenomenon and, and they go back. They must go back to the beginning of photography, I would think, you know. It's but probably the, hieroglyphic somewhere. Some some guy has chiseled out some curves on the wall. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. They did back in ancient Rome. Um, but but the, the, I don't know if this is a, a, a totally a guy thing because I have female friends who will tell you that they had Sean Cassidy posters, right? Sure. Um, Elvis posters, whoever, yeah. Bobby Sherman posters. Yeah. So I don't think it's just necessarily a guy thing. Elvis, Fabian, yeah. Whoever. They love Fabian for his hair. That, yes. was, that was all. Um, well, we've kind of solved the, the dichotomy of the sexes here. That's it. <laughs> Everything. You know, actually, the only person we didn't mention as a, a some. If you were older, if you were a World War II generation kind of guy, Betty Grable, I think, would have been on your list as well. Betty Grable's famous photograph. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm familiar, but but yeah, I wasn't I wasn't I'm not quite that old. And I do want to circle back because we mentioned the the Bond girls. For me, uh, uh, Thunderball <clears throat> has got the most, and I I get a little flack from female friends when I say this. Pound for pound, more great-looking Bond girls in Thunderball than any other James Bond movie, for me. Okay. All right. Well, on that note... Keep an eye. Yeah. <laughs> on that note, let's sign off with a salute to Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> Betty Grable. <laughs> and Betty Grable. And, and let's not forget Salma Hayek. And yeah. Lovey Howell. Oh, Lovey, I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Live your life, forget your age, embrace the boom. Guys, thank you again for having me back. See you soon, Bill. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.